Eddie. And with the English regimental song from the White Eagle goes a salute to all the English regiments, wherever they may be, and to all men of the United Nations who are fighting with us for the preservation of the democratic way of life, to men of Canada, New Zealand, and Australia, men of Poland, Yugoslavia, and Holland, men of Norway, Czechoslovakia, and Denmark, men of free France, men of China, men of Russia, to you we send our thanks and wherever possible, much more than our thanks. We send our guns, our planes, our ships, and our men, because we still believe in certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. For these rights, America, together with her allies, will fight. And America, together with her allies, will win. The great Russian composer Tchaikovsky is probably best known for his symphonic composition. Uh, symphonies number one, two, three, five, six, and four. Oh, that's, that's right, Bobby. But Tchaikovsky... Oh, his name but... was uh, Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Yeah, uh, and his melodic music... You know, we... it's uh, very unusual, but Tchaikovsky had twin brothers. What's so unusual about that? Do you have twin brothers? Uh, all right, you win. All right. Well, these fellows' names were Anatole and Modeste Tchaikovsky. That's very interesting, Bobby. That's and uh, around 1875, a fellow named Tchaikovsky used to advertise in the Moscow News every day. He sold corn plasters. Corn plasters? Yes, but he was no relation. Different family entirely. Look, let's get back to the composer, will you? Uh, Peter Ilyich? Yes, Peter Ilyich. Everyone in America knows the popular songs that modern dance orchestras have adapted from Tchaikovsky's melodies. Yes, and Tchaikovsky wrote a great many songs himself. 
117 of them. The first group was written in December of 1869, contains the hauntingly beautiful melody that is the best known of all his songs. Nelson Eddy sings, None But the Lonely Heart. You know, we're very happy to welcome Nadine Connor of the Metropolitan Opera Company. Nadine is one opera singer who's American right back to December the 21st, 1620, when her ancestors landed in the December Mayflower. 22nd, and last December 22nd, Nadine made her debut at the Metropolitan Opera House. That's just 321 years after the Mayflower landed. Correction. 321 years and one day. A little man is right. <laughs> Anyway, Nadine was a great success, anyway. as I knew she would be. I've always been a fan of Nadine Connor since I sang with her on a radio series several years ago. I'm very glad to say that she's going to be with us every week from now on. For her first song on her first old gold program, Nadine Connor sings the jewel song from Faust. <laughs> from Gilbert and Sullivan's Isle, Anthony. Nelson Eddy sings The Lord Chancellor's Nightmare. A friend of mine used to have nightmares. Awful. <laughs> friend of yours, Bobby. Well, then I can understand it. Yeah, but this fellow wasn't the Lord Chancellor. No, he was a piccolo player. <laughs> a piccolo player? I should think his dreams would be very sweet. Uh, oh, 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 Nadine. Well, mm -hmm. Nelson, you must have had plenty of sleepless nights when you were learning the words of that Lord Chancellor's Nightmare. I did. And I hope I get all the words in now. Let's try it, Bobby. When you're lying awake with 
with a dismal headache and repose is tattled by anxiety. I conceive you may use any language you choose to indulge in without impropriety. For your brain is on fire, the best clothes can fire, of usual slumber to plunder you. First your counterpane goes and then covers your toes and your sheet slips demurely from under you. Then the blanketing tickles you feel like mixed pickles so terribly sharp as the pricking. And you're hot and you're cross and you tumble and toss till there's nothing fixed you in the ticking. Then the bedclothes all creep to the ground in a heap and you pick them all up in a tangle. Next your pillow resigns and politely declines to remain at its usual angle. Well, you get some repose in the form of a doze with hot eyeballs and head ever aching. But your slumbering teams with such horrible dreams that you'd very much better be waking. For you dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about in a steamer from Harwich, which is something between a large bathing machine and a very small second-class carriage. And you're giving a treat, penny ice and cold meat, to a party of friends and relations. They're a ravenous horde, and they all came aboard at Stone Square and South Kensington Station. And bound on that journey, you find your attorney who started that morning from Devon. He's a bit undersized, and you don't feel surprised when he tells you he's only 11. While well, you're driving like mad with a singular lad, by the by, the ship's now a four-wheeler. And you're playing round games, and he calls you bad names, and you tell him the ties pay the dealer. But this you can't stand. You throw up your hand, and you find you're as cold as an icicle. In your shirt and your socks, the black silk with gold clocks, crossing Salisbury Plain on a bicycle. And he and the crew are on bicycles, too, which they've somehow or other invested in. And he's telling the Tars all the particulars of a company he's interested in. It's a scheme of devices to get at low prices. All goods from cost mixtures to cables, which tickle the sailors by treating retailers as though they were all vegetables. You get a good spaceman to plant a small tradesman. First take off his boots with a boot tree, and his legs will take root, and his fingers will shoot, and they'll blossom and bud like a fruit tree. From the green growth of the tree, you get grapes and green peas, cauliflowers, pineapples, and cranberries, while the pastry cook plants. Cherry brandy will grant apple pus and three corners and banbridge. The shares of a penny and ever so many are taken by Rothschild and Baring. And just as a few are allotted to you, you will wait with a shudder despairing. You're a regular wreck with a crick in your neck, and no wonder you snore for your head's on the floor. And your needles and pins in your soles to your shins, and your flesh is a creep for your left legs to sleep, and you crap and your toes and a fly on your nose and some puff in your lung and a feverish tongue and a thirst that's intense in a general sense that you haven't been sleeping in clover. But the darkness has passed, and it's daylight at last, and the night has been long. Ditto, ditto, my song. And thank goodness that both of them Nelson, down in Alabama, the town of Anniston may one day erect a memorial. For there in Anniston, Alabama, in February 1941, the first USO club was opened. I've seen the USO in action. He fought Monmouth and fought Dix, Camp Dix, that is, and it was really a great experience. Singing for the soldier boys is for me. All I can say is the USO boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and now the USO needs money, a lot of money. And all of us are being asked to contribute. Not told to, not forced to, but asked to. That's right. Poem. If you're in civvies, get the givey. You. Ed. Oh. <laughs> As President Roosevelt has said, we shall preserve for our men, wherever they may be, and without regard to race, creed, or color, the moral and spiritual values of the democratic ideals and freedoms for which they now are fighting because the USO is unitedly dedicated to that high purpose, and because that high purpose is a vital part of the job of winning this war, the USO should be supported by everybody, cheerfully, generously, and now. I see. Be 
Way back in 1919, an operetta called Apple Blossoms opened at the Globe Theater in New York. Nadine Connor and Nelson Eddy sing one of the famous duets in Apple Blossoms, You Are Free. <laughs> Next week, Nadine Connor and I will be back again, along with Bob Jarrett and Bobby Armbruster and his orchestra. We hope you'll join us. Until then, from every mountainside, let freedom reign. Join us again next week for the new Old Gold, present Nelson Eddy with Nadine Connor, the Metropolitan Opera Company, the Old Gold Chorus, and Robert Armbruster and his orchestra. Bob Jarrett speaking, this is the Columbia Broadcasting System.